What's going on, YouTube? Thought I would show you a reason as to why I haven't been making a lot of videos lately. Yeah, asbestos. We are redoing the floors in our house. So we have the vast majority of our small furniture stuff up in my room where I do uh, my Hot Wheels videos and my races. So I can't even get to my, uh, my racetrack right now. And we found out when we removed our carpet in our dining room that we had some old tiles under there that the lady who came out to measure for our flooring from Home Depot saw and immediately said, that's probably asbestos based. So we had it checked and it is. So we had to clear out our dining room and we have the crew out right now removing the asbestos tile so that we can get Home Depot to do our flooring. So if you wonder why I haven't been making any videos lately, it's just been crazy around here. So I apologize and I will make it up to you guys as, as soon as this is done. I will get, get my room cleared out and we'll get right back on that video, right back on those races again. I'll get back with you guys because I enjoy making my videos and I just haven't been able to lately. And here is the Kelly Motor Speedway barricaded by stuff that I have in my room. So yeah, I, I just have not been able to get get to the race and finish, so I really, really apologize for that. And I thank every one of my subscribers, and especially everyone who's uh, waiting to see if their car wins. You know, I have people who commented uh, wondering where the heck I'm at. Well, here I am, I'm okay, and I'm really sorry that it's taken this long to get back to the race, but I thank everyone for being patient. On that note, I do have something pretty special to show everyone and a little bit of a story. Okay, so I was hunting for Roger Dodgers uh, on eBay like I do all the time. I'm constantly checking it to see if there's anything new that I might have missed and uh, occasionally something pops up that uh, piques my interest or it's something that I don't have yet and one of the ones that popped up was of course this buddy 1974 plum crazy purple it's probably kind of hard to see there you go plum crazy purple with the um, alternate white interior which is extremely rare so of course I jumped I jumped at the opportunity to get my hands on this piece. Um, I see uh, they come up occasionally uh, loose, but you know, even from a reputable dealer, it's it's questionable whether it's been faked or not because this white interior, you can actually um, there's a couple different very um, um, shades of white I should say that uh, Roger Dodgers have been uh, known to have as interiors. But this one specifically, which is kind of a creamier, almost like a nicotine stained white, if you know what I'm trying to say, um, is used, I believe, in two other Roger Dodgers right now, as well as online. You can you can buy this interior loose. So buying a loose Roger Dodger with the white interior to me is skeptical because it's just there's some customizers out there who are just too good at what they do, and it's it's real easy to fake fake one and that's why I was really excited when I saw this on card of course that made the value go through the roof <laughs> so but I, I got it anyways and um, I chatted with this guy quite a bit also just to make sure he was he was legit and after several conversations with him of course I was um, I was pretty convinced he was he was okay and I picked this up off him and I asked him well, I was chatting with him after I uh, let him know that I received it. He packaged it really well. I was thanking him for that, and he was telling me that, of course, he's a really big, de really big seller of Hot Wheels online, and to check out his page and all this jazz. And I told him I was uh, interested in looking for uh, one of the blue Roger Dodgers, one of those very rare blue Roger Dodgers. And uh, you know, a little while passed, and he actually hit me back and said. I know of one that was posted on Facebook and I got I got excited but at the same time it was posted on one of those redline forums so 
the, the chances are um, of it still being around were pretty slim. But I asked him to try and um, try and reach out and find out who posted it. And apparently, who had posted it was a gentleman who owned a owned an antique shop. So there was a price tag on it. I got really excited. Whoops, sorry, I bumped the camera. I got really excited when I heard that, and. I told him, please try and uh, get a hold of the guy, get a hold of his name, get a hold of the name of the antique shop that uh, this this car is sitting at. Maybe I can talk to this guy. Well, quite a bit of time went by. I got a hold of the guy again through eBay because that's how we were messaging back and forth and said, you know, what's going on with that? And he, he said basically he's not sure uh, why he can't find out, you know, who the guy is or what the deal was. Um, so left it at that. And it was just kind of a bummer. And I was kind of uh, showing you the same car the entire time. This has got to be really boring. Here, I'll hold up another one that I just got. It's a black wall and it's in rough shape, but I just uh, couldn't pass up the $5.99 the person was selling it for on eBay, so I grabbed it just to give it a nice safe home with me. Um, so he hits, he hits me back after a while it passed. He goes, you ready for this? And I'm like, yeah, what's up? Well, he sends me a picture of a loose blue one. And I, my jaw hit the floor. I was like, uh-oh, now he's got a picture of it. So there, there's a chance that something could happen here. And he put me in touch with the gentleman who had it. And it turned out it was Mike Stephenson, if you know who that is. Big time collector, big time, uh, big time seller. He is one of three gentlemen who purchased the Larry Wood collection. And he had a loose one from the Larry Wood collection, as well as one of these buddies, too, that was hand-painted. It's probably the only gold one, one that's hand-painted, two that has capped rear wheels. That was exciting to see pictures of that. And we got, me and, me and Mike got to talking. He told me that um, there was another one on one of the half cards. If, if you know the story of the Blue Roger Dodger, he said there was one on a half card that he had he had gotten from a gentleman in uh, in the UK, I believe, and it was being sent to him. And he wanted to look at his loose one and compare it to the um, to the one on package to see if there were any variations before uh, he committed to possibly selling me a Roger Dodger, the blue one. And he got it, and of course there was a variation between the two. One of them had a black interior with um, capped rear wheels. The other one had uncapped rear wheels with a brown interior. So he was kind of hesitant to sell because, of course, variations. He's a huge collector. He wanted both. But he, he got back to me after a couple days of thinking about it. I told him, please take your time. Don't rush your decision. If you're not going to sell it, don't hurt yourself by selling it to me. Uh, he finally hit me back and he said, yeah, I'm willing to sell one. I'm going to sell you the one on card. I, my, my, I lost my mind because that was the one I was hoping he wanted to part with. Just, you know, because one, it's the cut card. And I will read you the story if you don't know the story of the blue, the rare blue Roger Dodger. Or if you don't follow WTF4's page where he um, he showed off all of his 1974 Flying Colors collection and he read this story as well. Uh, this explains the Blue Roger Dodger. Uh, in 1985, young Bob Parker was trading matchbox cars uh, for Hot Wheels cars with a collector in England. The collector in England was trading Bob the UK Flying Color models. In one of the boxes of assorting Flying Color cars from England, there were two Blue Roger Dodgers. Bob knew the color was different and told him to see if he could get more. The next box had five more of them in it. Bob thought he would be able to get more and started to sell them through his mail order business. There were seven total and all seven went to collectors um, around the country. Uh, he assumed he would get more and didn't keep one for himself. He continued to trade and continued to get more flying colors, but never any more Blue Roger Dodgers. When he asked where the man in England got them, he said he was buying the flying color models from a man at a monthly toy show in Germany. Um, of the seven, only three were in complete packages, and the other four were in perfectly cut half packs. Which, of course, after that it says value immeasurable. Um, that's not necessarily true. A value can be put on anything, as you're about to see. 
Uh, I won't get into what I paid for it, but after a really long and and a really great conversation with Mike Stephenson, we we talked about just the love of Hot Wheels and collecting in general, and um, a bit about his uh, his part in the purchase of the Larry Wood collection. And out of that, made made a pretty cool diecast friend, as well as this buddy right here. This is one of the four cut cards. It says perfectly cut in half, but really it's not. Cut closer to the top, but there it is. An on card, on cut card, blue 1974 Roger Dodger. The absolute highlight now of my collection. This completes my Roger Dodger collection. There were a few more that I was looking for weirder stuff uh, since I made my last video of the 60 plus variations of the Roger Dodger and I've since found them as well so I'll do a little recap on those uh, down the road but I wanted to show you guys this because really if you go online there's there's a lot of information and then there's no information <laughs> you know there's a lot about what the car is but there's not any like there's no video footage there's only two or three or four of them that have pictures um majority of them are loose there's one set of pictures you can see when you do a google search for it uh from a sale that was done on ebay several years ago and the story goes that that one sold for six thousand a couple variations of the story say it sold for 8000 That one was on a complete unpunched card. Well, punched, but not, you know, the hole wasn't completed out. And, yeah, I really thought I would never be able to find one of these. The rarity, they would just never pop up. And when they would pop up, they would be at some astronomical price. Uh, let me tell you, it, it was up there in price, but it wasn't out of reach. So I talked to my wife. Um, quite extensively because we're doing some some renovations around our home right now and we had to kind of like see where we were at financially and make sure we were still able to do the things and live our life the way we want to with this also um, being added to to our you know to our budget <laughs> um, and after a little bit of uh, talking with her about it we, we came to a conclusion and uh, here it is so Mike Stephenson if you ever see this video Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to purchase such an amazing, highly valuable, rare Roger Dodger. That's it, I'll take some pictures for you, some close-ups of it at the end here. And appreciate everyone uh, hanging out with me and listening to my story for a little bit. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.